Okay, it's another day, another project. You know, I just put my daughter's 280SE out of storage and we're getting it ready for some summer cruising. And it wasn't running very well. It was missing. I get on the road, you could feel the engine shake. It wasn't accelerated. It wasn't idling smoothly. Anybody want to guess what the culprit was? And I see this so many times when an engine sits over the winter. Yes, this is what it is right here. One spark plug. <laughs> Now, it didn't take long to fix this, and in this video, I'll just show you some tips on how I isolate a bad spark plug and get it replaced quickly. Just listen to how sweet this little six-cylinder runs down. Okay, now we're ready to hit the road. I just pulled this 280SE out of storage and took it for a quick spin around the patch here and it's not developing full power. I know this engine is missing. You know, one of these cylinders here is dropping off and I'm not getting full power. So I'm going to start the engine now and take you through the procedure I use to quickly determine if one or more of these cylinders is not firing. Now you could use a scope, you could do an electronic analysis on this, it's going to show you a lot, but for the DIY mechanic working at home, you just want to find out which cylinder is missing. Then we're going to figure out, well, is it a spark plug lead, is it a spark plug, or maybe a plugged fuel injector, but the initial diagnosis has to be, okay, which one of these six cylinders is not firing? Now to do this, you're going to need a spark plug clamping tool like this for the leads, and it has to have insulated handles here because you don't want to get zapped, all right? And I am going to go in here and I'm going to grab a hold of the metal part of the lead. Don't grab a hold of this wire. You're going to pull it out. But I'm going to grab a hold of it and then I can pull this out while the engine's running. What I'll do is just one at a time, I will pull this back a little bit and see if I can hear any drop in RPM. Follow me here now. If the engine is firing on that particular cylinder, as soon as I pull the lead back, the engine RPM will drop. So let's see if we can go through all six cylinders with this procedure. And you listen closely. Let's figure out which cylinder or which cylinders are not dropping RPM when we pull the leads off. Now to the untrained ear, the engine may sound okay, but I'm picking up a vibration here. I'm also picking up an exhaust note that kind of lets me know that it's missing probably on one of these six cylinders. So I'm going to start with number one here. I'm going to reach in here and grab a hold of that spark plug lead. I'm going to pull it back about an inch. Listen closely and watch the engine. All right, see, it dropped. The RPM dropped a little bit. Let's plug that one back on. Let's go to number two. Look at that. No change. Let's do it again. Just pull it back about an inch. All right, maybe a slight, but I tell you, there's pretty much no change on number two. Let's do number three. Okay, that's pretty obvious there. That one really dropped. Let's do number four. Once again, RPM drop. We'll do number five. Hear it drop, plug it back in, and number six. Okay, that one dropped too. Look at it shake right there, see that? Now as soon as I plug it back in, it's gonna smooth up a little bit. Okay, let's go back to number two here and just check this one more time. Look at that, no RPM drop on number two. So this is a cylinder that's malfunctioning. Once again, we don't know yet whether it's a spark plug, a spark plug lead, low compression, or a plug fuel injector. The first thing we want to do is go after the simple thing and check the spark plug. To get this plug out, I get to demonstrate this new spark plug socket that I just got. I've probably used 30, 40 different spark plug sockets over the years, and they can be really frustrating. Some are too floppy, some have a rubber piece in there that rots and falls out, and that allows a spark plug to drop down in the engine. What's nice about this one, it has one of the strongest magnets I've ever found in a spark plug socket. Watch this. You put this spark plug in there, 
and you're, it's not gonna fall out. In fact, you can hardly even pull it out. So that's why I like this one. I like it because it has a nice swivel to it and it has that really strong magnet. All right, let's pull this plug out and we're gonna get to see what's going on in there. That plug is gonna tell us something. Now here's another thing I like about this wrench. I can extend it out if I need more torque to get these plugs loose. I'll get that loose and then I can just slide it in. And then we'll go ahead and spin it out. See that? Once it's loose, I can go ahead and pop the ratchet off and just roll this the rest of the way out by hand. And I do not need to worry about the spark plug falling down into the hole. Look at that. All right. Do you see what I see? Totally wet spark plug. Okay, that spark plug is not firing at all. So what I'm going to do is I've got some good use plugs. I'll put a plug in there. If it's still missing after I replace the plug, then I have more diagnostic work to do. But I would say in eight out of 10 times, this should happen, you just replace the plug and it's gonna solve the problem. When I'm installing plugs in these engines, particularly engines that have difficult to reach spark plug holes, I always use a rubber hose to get the spark plug started. Why? Because nothing can give me the feel of a rubber hose. I can get this hose in here and I can twist it back and forth and kind of start to feel when it goes in, there it goes. Now I should be able to turn this almost all the way in with the rubber hose. If I'm having to force it or it won't turn easily by hand, then there's something wrong. I either have the spark plug cross threaded or the threads in the head need chasing. Uh, this is a real safety thing. It keep you from stripping those threads out in your cylinder head, doesn't matter what engine we're talking about here. So once that's in there, I'm gonna go ahead and get my ratchet. And we'll just reach down in there, see how nice it is to have that swivel ball on the, on the socket itself. Okay, then I'll go ahead and move it out here. All right, now I'll hook this lead back up and let's fire the engine up and see if that made a difference. Okay, cross our fingers. I'll just get in here and fire this little baby up. Oh, I think I can tell the difference already. Maybe those of you who've worked around these engines can probably hear and see the difference already. You can hear it in the exhaust. You don't get that burbling sound back there in the tailpipe like we were before. Okay, uh, we'll get the tool. And we're going to reach in here and pull number two. Now listen closely. Hear that drop? Let's do it again. There's the drop. And here you can see it shaking like it was earlier in this video. Now watch the engine smooth out as I plug this lead back in. See that? All right, success. You know, if you're interested in purchasing either of these tools, just follow the links in the description of this video.